Can I get Kids Quest Choir up, please? Well, Jesus said to suffer the little children to come unto me. Could we give a great big hand for our Kids Quest Choir tonight? Come on. Come on. Is that the best you all can do tonight? They're up here. They're up here to worship the Lord tonight and uh, maybe even take over. I don't know. All right. Put your hands together. Welcome one more time. Help.
Tonight. Let's give our children a great hand for singing praise and worship to Jesus tonight. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Shall we open our service up tonight? If you're a worshiper of Jesus Christ, would you just lift your voice and your hands right now? Let's open up this service with praise. Lord, we love you tonight. God, we thank you for our children. God, we thank you, Lord, for their praise and worship to you. Father, we come before you tonight to express in a public way, God, our love and our devotion and our worship to you. Lord, you brought us out of bondage, and you brought us out of darkness, Lord, into great marvelous light. Lord, I thank you tonight that you saved me, that I once was lost, but now I'm found. And I once was blind, but praise God, now I see. And Lord, I want to take my voice tonight, 
and I'm going to take my hands tonight, and I'm going to fill this room with the sound of the redeemed, Lord, for you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. I thank you tonight, Lord, for allowing us to be here. In Jesus' name, let's let our worship begin tonight.
worship him in this place tonight. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. The captivator of the searching heart, this Jesus, how precious, the mender of a million shattered parts, this Jesus, we
time. We're going to prepare for the praying and the anointing of the sick tonight. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Why has God given us prayer? God has given us prayer, or the I, I've often said the privilege, the privilege of prayer, because it is a privilege to be able to pray. God has given us the privilege of prayer to confront the realities of life. The realities of life. It is false doctrine to say that once you come and embrace Jesus that you'll never have another problem. It is false doctrine to say that even to say that everyone that is sick will be healed. I do believe that if you know God, that everyone that is sick receives the ultimate healing. But we've been given the privilege tonight of prayer to confront the realities of life. Does it matter how spiritual you are? And I hope you really hear this tonight. You will never reach a plateau of spirituality to where you'll not have any problems. You'll never fast enough days. You'll never pray enough hours. You'll never give enough and volunteer enough work 
to separate yourselves from the afflictions of this life. But thank God He gave us prayer. He gave us prayer. Paul, the Apostle Paul, writer of over half the New Testament, he wrote in 2 Timothy 4, 20, he said, I have a friend by the name of Theophilus. I had to leave him at Miletus sick. Wait a minute, Paul. You're so anointed that they tuck prayer cloths into your belt. And after you're through preaching, they take them and send them out. Wait a minute, Paul. You've been given so much revelation that you had to have a thorn put in your flesh to remind you. But even Paul, let it be, let it be written. That was one of my friends. That my prayer apron didn't help. I left him sick. But somebody prayed. Somebody prayed. Tonight I cannot tell you as you come to be anointed with oil that you're sick. I cannot tell you that you will walk away from this place healed. But I can tell you tonight that if you're sick. And you'll come up here and be anointed. That God who knows best. Will either give you more grace. Or God can heal all manner of sickness and disease. What we do tonight is according to the word. We have to be able to give an answer. Why do you all anoint with oil? We anoint with oil because of James 5, 14. The word of God says, If any sick among you is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. If you have a need tonight and you want to signify to the presence of God, that does not mean that you don't have to pray. It just simply means that you're lifting your hand in the presence of God tonight. As we pray, if you're sick and you want one of these elders to anoint you, will you make your way as we begin to pray right now? Father... You know the needs, God, that we have in this local church. God, you know the needs, Lord, that we have. God, I pray for Sister Shannon Menendez. God, I pray for that little baby that was born, God. Maya, God, I pray for her. I pray, Lord, that you strengthen that little baby and you would touch that mother tonight. Father, I ask you to touch Brother Lee this evening, God. Zelta Wilson tonight, Lord. God, I ask you this evening, Lord, that you would move, God, upon all the needs in this building. God, we lift up our needs to you right now. Father, I ask you tonight that you would touch my helpmate. God, you would touch my dear sweet wife tonight. God, you would move and touch her body this evening, Lord. God, I pray for Sister Nellie tonight. God, I ask you, Lord, to move upon all the needs, God, of this church tonight. Lord, I ask you, Father, to touch every burden that we're bearing. Lord, we give you every burden tonight, God. Lord, we give you every, knee, every burden that we carry tonight. God, we give you every heartbreak, every heartache, God. Lord, we give you everything that we're carrying tonight. Lord, the cross that's upon our back, God. Lord, if it's not your will to remove my cross, then sweet Jesus, give me the grace. Give me more strength to carry my cross, God. Lord, I ask you this evening, Lord, to be a born. God, let there be deliverance in this house. Lord, let men and women be delivered in this place tonight. God, let there be healings, oh God, in this house tonight. Lord, let the answer come tonight. Lord, let troubled souls, Lord, receive your touch tonight. God, anoint our special evangelist tonight that he would deliver under the unction of the Lord, the Holy Ghost. He would deliver, God, the word to our hearts.
hearts this evening, God. Lord, let every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place feel your love tonight and feel your mercy tonight, God. I ask that you would heal every troubled marriage in this house tonight. I ask, Lord, that you would walk up and down the aisles of this church. Touch every heart, Lord, that has not been fully obedient. Lord, have your way tonight, God. Lord, all the names, God, that's been written. God, all the names, Lord, that, if, that I lay my hand upon right now. Lord, touch them tonight, sweet Jesus, with comfort. Lord, we know that you hear us when we pray. We ask all of these things tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I believe that you've heard us tonight. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a praise right now. If you believe he heard your prayer tonight, would you give him a praise right now? You may be seated as these are continuing to be prayed for. We will call for our choir to come at this time.
that all things are working for our good. How many believe that when we cannot see it, God, we still believe it. God, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we put our full trust in you. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But I will remember the name of the Lord. How many believe that we win? We've read the end of the book. By the power of the blood of Jesus and by the word of our testimony, we win tonight. Sing with us.
Atmosphere is changing, nothing stays the same. Heaven is waiting for the mention of the name. The spirit is moving, burning like a flame. Healing the broken, by the one we proclaim.
tonight he has blessed us with his presence oh Jesus thank you Lord oh there's nothing like the aroma and the anointing of your presence Jesus Lord I love you I love you tonight as you're making your way back to your pew give the Lord a hand of praise right now great is the Lord greatly to be praised do you feel with me tonight that our prayer revival has taken our praise and our worship to a whole new level can I get a witness tonight as you're making your way back to your seat right now God is so good to us Several guests are here with us tonight, and we are so delighted that you would come to First Apostolic Church. And we'd like to put our hands together right now and welcome you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Prayers are being answered. Seems like that just, just one after another. And people come up to me and say, Brother Carpenter, this prayer got answered, or that prayer got answered. And I'm, I'm so thankful, so thankful for all the prayers that, that, God is, that God is answering. 
He's a prayer answering God. Amen. He's a prayer answering God. This church has been blessed. I want to highlight a family tonight. This church from its very start was blessed with a man by the name of Sean Ammons. And Sean Ammons became one of the elders here at the church. He married Sister Sandra Rutherford, of course, became Sister Sandra Ammons. And God blessed them with three beautiful children. God blessed the Ammons with all girls, three beautiful girls. And uh, been privileged, Brother and Sister Ammons brought these young, their children up in the house of the Lord. And uh, all of them have, have married fine, just fine Christian young men. And the last Ammons girl to get married was Brittany. Brittany was the last one to get married. And young man, Brother Christopher Poland, the only thing I got against him is he come down here and stole her out of the church. And uh, they now faithfully go to his brother-in-law's church in Greenville. And um, we're all just like family around here. So the other day, Sister Brittany called the house and uh, said, we got some special news to tell you. And I, I gathered Sister Carpenter around and, and uh, we, we were, you know, we knew it was either, it was either, they're expecting or they're moving back home. One of the two, all right? And uh, they broke the news. They said, we are expecting. Matter of fact, Brittany and Christopher stand back there. I, I asked them, I asked them, I want to go ahead and give them. Somebody start clapping. Give them a hand. And uh, we, just, we just, over the phone, we rejoiced with them that they'd think enough of us to call us and break the news to us and I said well when is the baby due and he said well excuse me it's babies more than one and here God's got a sense of humor cause he blessed brother Sean and sister Sandra with three beautiful girls and now Brittany is expecting Twin boys. So the boys are coming to the Ammons house. Amen. We congratulate. Brother, give them another great hand. Christopher and Brittany, we love you. Boy, we can't. We just, we just can't wait for that, for that to happen. Amen. We, uh, somebody said, you got a lot of children here. I said, we got herds of them. They move through this church in, in, in herds, and we're so thankful for all of our children tonight. We want our ushers to come forward at this time, and we're going to wait on, upon you for the receiving of our Sunday evening offering, the work, work of God. God's been so good to us. God's been so good to us. Don't you get humbled when you come into the presence of the Lord. God has been, God has been so good. God has been so good to us. The song said, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I look around here tonight, folks. I don't know of anything we don't have to praise the Lord for. But we got so many reasons we ought to be praising God tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to stop. I just want to praise him and praise him and praise him. Praise him and praise him and praise him and praise him. How good God. How good God has been to us. If you would stand as our custom is, we march and bring our offering to the Lord. Brother, <clears throat> Brother Hammond took up the offering or took up the tithe and offerings today and I I wish he could, could tell it again tonight, but he told of cleaning his car out and finding some money that was from Rome. 
And uh, he said, uh, he said it's, it's money, it's currency, but it's currency from, a, from another country. From another country. And he, then he made, made mention of how we are laying up treasures. The Bible says to lay up treasures in heaven. So we're taking our currency tonight and we're changing it. We're changing it. We come back in the country. If we've got any currency from the country we're coming from, just right there in the airport, just right there in the airport is a currency exchange. You can take that country's currency and you can get it, get it exchanged into the currency of American dollars. And, and I do that often. But tonight I'm taking American dollars and I'm exchanging it into the heavenly currency. I'm giving it to the work of God that only heaven... Only heaven will be able to reveal. We march on. We march out the right side of your pew and back in the opposite side. And we ask that if you're you're physically able, you're physically able to come. And uh, I I won't I won't say who, but one of my special trendsetters told me today said that, that somebody had told them said you, you're slow when you march, so don't march. I don't know who told you that, but I say march. I don't care how slow you are. If you want to bring something to God tonight, I say march tonight. I say march. And we might have to do you like we do you on the highway. We may have to put our blinker on and go around you. But you come on and march and you bring your offering. You bring your offering to the Lord tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you for all your kindness. God, I'm just so humbled when I get in your presence, Lord. God, when I think about all that you've done for us, and I guess the abundance of mercy that you've shown to all of us, God. You've washed us in your blood, and you've given us a plan, Lord. You brought us to your house, and you blessed us, God, with your presence. God, I ask you tonight as we bring our offerings to you, receive these offerings. Multiply the offerings. That we may help finance worldwide evangelism. God bless tonight. In the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. Bring your offerings tonight.
again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, you get in the service like this and you just don't want it to stop. You just, you just don't want it to stop. God's had so much mercy on us. God's had so much mercy upon us. What a debt we owe the Lord tonight. What a debt we owe the Lord. What a, what a debt. What a debt we owe the Lord. What a good God. Please excuse me tonight, but I just don't want it to stop tonight. I just don't want it to stop. You stand with me tonight. In a day, of, in an age of rush and hurry, and I don't read where they're cutting down the time on these ball games. I don't read where they're cutting down the time on a lot of things of this world. Feel the presence of the Lord. God is so good to us. God is so good to us. I thought I'd look back. Alec, so good to see you tonight. So good to see you. A young man serves us in the military. So good to see him tonight. I've invited a special guest to be with us tonight. I introduced them this morning. Brother and Sister Thornton and their beautiful children. I told you today that I've known this man. I've known Brother and Sister Thornton for some time. He has the anointed voice of his pastor, Brother Jerry Dean, from Bossier City, Louisiana. He married Sister Shelley. Our own brother Erickson had a hand to do with that in Bible college. He introduced Sister Shelley to Brother Nathan. Sister Shelley's aunts go here to the church, Sister Dorothy and Sister Betty. I apologize tonight, but the Lord's so real in this place. I have uh, known him for a long time and he has honored me a few times and let me come and preach for the world-renowned church there in West Monroe, Louisiana. I'm going to tell you, when you get a man, the anointing that he has on him is the anointing that has come through hardship, the anointing that has come through disappointment, the anointing that comes through victory. He's an apostolic preacher tonight. For those of you that don't know Nathan, Brother Nathan Thornton, he's an apostolic preacher. He's a holiness preacher. And he's not ashamed to let you know he is an apostolic <laughs> holiness preacher. They love God. They love souls. He in that church there is a missions giving machine of how much they give. Tonight, I don't want any of us, we want Brother Thornton to know we're not going to size him up to see if we're going to like him. We're not going to see what he can do. We got our Bibles in hand tonight. I would as Brother Thornton comes to this pulpit. I would that you just lift up your Bibles tonight because God's going to speak to us. 
Come on, let's lift up our Bibles right now. Welcome to this pulpit from West Monroe, Louisiana. Brother Nathan Thorpe. Come on, that's it. Let's just continue worshiping him. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, my assignment is pretty simple tonight. To just tap into what's already here. A deep reservoir of revelation. This church, uh, there's not many of them that have all five offices of the ministry that, whether you call them offices or whatever, that operate in your worship service. But when you walk in this place, these altars are easy, they're not barren. You can feel the spirit of prayer that's in this place. Now, I know you probably can measure the dollar amount on this beautiful building. Every detail is unbelievable. But probably the most expensive thing that is in this building is right when you walk through the door, the anointing of the Lord that hits you. And uh, what you don't know is I preached my first revival for Bishop right after I got married. And it was at that altar that the Lord called me to evangelize. About 7.10 in the morning, Brother Erickson was, I, I remember y'all were building your gym at the old property and Brother Erickson was over there breaking concrete and I was the evangelist so I wasn't over there breaking concrete. I was under the front, front row on the left side of the church praying. And God called me to evangelize. This church, I, I'm just in awe. I'm refreshed. I could go home right now with what has already happened in this, this service. Don't you love this place? Don't you love what you feel? If you got your Bibles, the book of Hebrews chapter 11, I give honor to Bishop and his wife and uh, the Ericsons in their absence. Happy birthday, Paris. I hope everybody in here gives you a $100 bill. Amen. And the Hammonds, and we certainly miss Nolan today in this wonderful church. What an incredible incredible spirit of the Lord that is in this place today. Now, you've got a, you've got a pastor that invented preaching. And uh, so I feel absolutely no pressure to try to out-preach the man that invented it. But I am going to tap in to what is already here. This is the kind of church you could preach on tithing, you could preach on anything you wanted to and 30 people's going to get the Holy Ghost and people are going to get healed because that's what type of revelation that's in this place. So tonight I'm just going to tap into what's already here and I'm going to believe the Lord's going to do something incredible. I give honor to my wife, my three kids. Y'all pray for her. She keeps them and uh, they act like me. And she has to take care of her. I don't know what her mother did, but that's her punishment. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6, it's good to have the ark people here. Good to see my crew that come up for the wedding. Glad you're here. And listen, listen, I, I love you, dude. I don't even know you. God bless you. You're having triplets. Is that what they said? Triplet twins? Oh, my God. They're multiply. That's what these altars do around here. But I'm going to just tell you, I'm not proselyting you. But if you ever get married, don't ever leave this church. <laughs> I'm getting in trouble. Hebrews 11, chapter, chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, somebody say without faith. 
it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh, somebody say that cometh, that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I just want to talk to you just for a few moments tonight, hopefully. Elements for a miracle. Elements for a miracle. Would you lift your hands and lift your voice and let's magnify the name of Jesus in this place. I love you so much, Lord. I feel your glory in this place. I pray right now by the power of your holy word, God, that you would speak to us tonight. God, we bind every spirit of doubt, fear, confusion, every spirit that would exalt itself above your knowledge. We take authority over it right now. We lose faith, understanding, and peace. Have free course in this place, God. Do what only you can do, Lord, and we'll give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands? Would you lift up your voice a little bit louder than that hand clap? God, I praise you in this place. I praise you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated. We understand that faith is absolutely essential to everything that we do. In fact, in Luke 18, you find the parable of a widow who was going before an unjust judge. The Bible teaches us that with her continual coming, that she wearied him until he, until he finally decided to do the request. But the end of that great parable teaches us that when Jesus returns, that he is going to be looking for faith. Has anybody got any faith in this place tonight? We have felt the reservoir, the power, the anointing of faith already in this service. I'm reminded of the story when Jesus was sitting on the well and the woman who was, had been married five times and the husband that she was, or the man that she was with wasn't her husband. Adams Clark says that that well that he set on is dried up every day of the year except for one. And it was the day that Jesus set on that well. There's a reservoir of foundational faith that is in this place today. A continual spring of water that lives right here in this sanctuary tonight. Some of you have walked in this place with great needs, but I've come to tell you tonight that the answer is in the house tonight. I know you look at the beauty of this great temple, but what you don't understand is that this church has been built on something greater than just a beautiful, magnificent building. That the years added up to a promise that God has given, a pastor that you would hear tell the stories that he would be praying in his office and talking through a cordless mic to the prayer room at an old church because there was something building in Maryville. This is a well-old machine. This, I know y'all are having a conference called The Movement but I want you to know there is a movement inside of this building today. I'm going to get better here in a moment. There is a movement right in the middle of all of us in this place. This church has not even seen the favor that is already moving in the atmosphere of the Spirit God has prepared a way, and I've come here tonight to tell you 
that there's something different in the atmosphere. I haven't been here in years, and I don't know, I don't know what you've felt over the last few years, but I can tell you, and it's not because I'm here, but there is something different in the atmosphere of this church. There is something powerful. There is something that God desires to do. There is a work that God wants to do, not just around the world, but right here in Maryville, Tennessee. Come on, somebody. Can I tell you, you want to know why people move here? They come under the influence of their changing a job, but no, 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 no. They felt something that was like a magnet. I need to get to preaching. When I took our church, when I took our church in 2010, I wanted, I, I looked at three churches that was having apostolic revival. And I wanted to be and find out what they were doing, three of them. It was my home church. It was this church, and I'll just leave the other one alone. But it was, it was three churches that I looked into, and Maryville was one of them. And what I learned was that you build a church on prayer, sound doctrine. Prayer, sound doctrine, and giving. Giving of money, giving of time, giving of their lives. That's what I learned. And I remember, I remember when, and I, I'm not, I know I'm on the web, so I'll be extremely careful tonight, but I, I understand when I took our church, we were 65000 behind on our mortgage. We were $18,000 missing in the tithe account. All I, really, all I should say was we were broke. Y'all got what I'm talking about? We were broke. And I remember having trustee meetings and, and crying all night. My wife, I remember weeks on end, trustee meetings, uh, trying to figure out how to turn the ship around. And, and, and all I could hear was my bishop and your bishop and, 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 and another great man of God preaching. All I could hear was them preaching. And I would go at the end of the month and I would say how much money we got in our account. And bishop, all we would have would be $9. And I would say, send it to missions. Now, now, I'm sure when they got that check at headquarters, they grinned a little bit. But I knew that God wasn't going to trust me with thousands until he could trust me with nine. <laughs> Let me tell you what Maryville sold into our small, our little church in West Monroe. We had our missions conference this week, and we've already taken in $170,000. $257,000 have been pledged. You want to know what? That's what happened with a $9 seed. Now, I'm not preaching just about money. I'm trying to get us to a level tonight that's already in this place. If you knew how ripe the Spirit of the Lord was in this house, everybody that needed the Holy Ghost was, would get the Holy Ghost tonight. So there's some things that we've got to do if we want to have a miracle. Faith is extremely powerful. In its beginning state, the Bible teaches us that faith in its beginning has the power to move a mountain. Where does faith start? Where does faith start? I'm glad you asked. Faith starting point is extremely easy. It starts when you believe that he is. If you can believe that he is, anything is possible. Anything can happen at any time. And I can tell you, I'm amongst some people, the majority of people that's in this building tonight that know that God is a healer and that God is a deliverer and that God can do anything at any time. Come on, is there anybody that believes that today? What is he? I'll tell you what he is. He's better than a doctor. He's better than a lawyer. He's better than math. He's better than cocaine. He's better than the alcohol. He's better than the divorce. Somebody shout, he is. 
He is, he is, he is. So if you've got enough faith just to declare with your mouth that he is God and he is greatly to be praised, I want you to know tonight he can come in this place like he already has. He is, somebody shout he is. If you want a miracle, you gotta learn how to position yourself. Somebody say, position yourself. You got to anticipate his move. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This choir gives out cues to when he's ready to move. Come on, your pastor, these men of God that lead the service, they give out cues when God is getting ready to move. You got to position yourself. In in Luke 19, Zacchaeus, the Bible tells us he was was small. His stature was small. And the Bible teaches us that he saw the way Jesus was going. So he ran out in front of the Lord and he climbed a tree. You want to know what he did? He broke his own limitations. Here's what I found out about faith. See, faith will challenge every excuse that you have. There's some of you, you don't want anybody to know that you're struggling with your marriage. But faith is wanting to challenge you tonight. And before you end up in divorce court, you need to try this altar because it's right. Some of you are fighting a sickness that's held held you to a pew. But faith wants to challenge that limitation and put you in the path of where people get healed. Can I tell you tonight, you want to know what I like about the service that we're having tonight? I don't know if you got healed during the choir or if you got healed during the preaching because healing takes place in this place at all times. Come on, you need to challenge your limitations. You say, well, I'll have to limp up. I'll have to limp to the altar. Well, you'll walk back. I'll need somebody to help me. Will you get back. You need to challenge your limitations. He said, I might be short, but I'm going to climb my way up. And if I'll climb my way up, I'll get the attention of Jesus. If you want to get his attention, you're going to have to challenge your limitations. Somebody in this building ought to say, I want God's attention. I want Jesus' attention. I need a miracle. Somebody say, I need to just position myself. You got to get in the right positions. You got to do the right thing. I'm going to just tell you, I'm going to just tell you, I'm allergic to dead church. I mean, my, I, I get the shakes when we start having dead church. I'm telling you, I'm allergic to dead church. I like spon- spontaneity. I like praise. I like aisle running. I, I, I know I can say it here. I like tongue talking. I like people getting a little crazy. When I, I, I'm going to tell you, you know what I like about it? What I like about it, some of your gray-headed folks were the one coming out of the pews when the choir was. That, I, I like that. You want to know why? Because that challenges, that challenges the limitations. Somebody say, I got to position myself. Hey, number two, I only got 47 of these. Number two. (laughs) You got to leave the familiar. You you, got to leave the familiar. As a guest preacher, you want to know what the the weirdest thing in the world to do is to walk into church and worry, am I getting somebody's seat? That's all I could think of when I walked in this building. I was like, oh, God, God, give me a favor today. Don't let me sit in nobody's seat. We get familiar with things. And don't get me wrong, I love tradition. But we can't, we can't worship traditions. Can I say something in the Holy Ghost today? God's doing new things. This is a new season for this church. Not a change in doctrine. This is a new season. You haven't seen what God's going to do in this place. Uh, y'all, y'all hear me right now. This church is not an ornament on God's favor tree. This church 
his position for something great. But if we're going to see it, we got to leave the familiar. We got to leave the familiar. You want to know what I found out about Pentecostals? We are sick and we don't even know it. We're blind and we don't even know it. You remember that blind man? You remember that blind man that, that was in, in Bethsaida? And the Bible said Jesus went and took him and grabbed him and led him out of town. He led him out. We got the school of the blind in Ruston about 30 minutes from where our pastor and you can drive, and, and there's a lot of blind people there. And, man, they can get around, get around rusting with no problem. I'm talking about, and then they're teaching people, and they come out with them big glasses, and you're, they can see, and you're about to run over them because they're not in an environment that they were raised in. And what I have found, I, that God is trying to pull us Pull us out of some things that's uncomfortable. It, it challenges our personality, the way we think, the way we talk, our perception of church. It challenges a lot of things in our lives. But I promise you, that's where the touch of God, that's new territory. And I'm going to tell you what's not easy about new territory is when God takes you there, you don't really know how to act or what to do but this church has been equipped for every territory that you'll go to what do you do I'll tell you what you do you do what you already been doing you let the praise of the church speak for God you let the worship connect us to something that's greater we gotta leave the familiar can I say something and you not think I'm rude tonight? But it's time for some of you to join the movement that's in this place. You're comfortable behind your pews. It's time for you to get out from among your pew. I'm telling you, some of you, you've been itching in. You've been itching in. You like what you feel. Keep coming back. You like what you hear because it connects with your soul. But there's something trying to happen. There's a restoration. There's a redeeming power that's in this place some of the greatest soul winners in the world are sitting on these pews come on missionaries evangelists somebody say yes we gotta leave the familiar we gotta leave the familiar we gotta leave the familiar when he got in there the Bible said he prayed for him one of the greatest messages I've ever heard preached your pastor preached about this context, this text in scripture. But he prayed for me, touched him, took his hand off and said, can you see? He said, I see men as trees. And he said, touch him. And, and he prayed for him again. I wish you to pray for him a thousand times. Just to prove that we live by the touch of God. Can I tell this church? You want to know why there's so much power here? in this building because this church has done something that we haven't done in West Monroe and most churches do, do not conquer this church has broken the spirit of fear there's no fear here and I can sense fear because I've tried to pastor under the spirit of fear this church has said God if you point you'll provide You want to know why? What, what, what's my brother's name? It's a great. You want to know why you're going to have, some of you better get ready. They're going to be taking some of your front seats. You want to know why you're going to have a revival? Because there's, this church has conquered fear. When you walk in, you can feel faith. You can feel the anointing. You can feel something great. I'm going to tell you what would happen in this community if everybody in this building joined a small group or, or joined up with everything that's happening in this church and left the familiar and said, I, I know I've been going here for years, but, but man, what would happen if everybody, everybody left the familiar and said, we're going to see apostolic revival. We're going to see miracle signs and wonders I'll tell you what would happen you would see what is happening on a hundred times scale you would see hundreds receive the Holy Ghost in a first month somebody say I'm leaving the familiar I, I, I gotta hurry number three number three is 
you got to be obedient. Man, I love obedience. My wife says I don't like to obey. I just do it when she's not looking. I love obedience. John 9 gives an incredible story about a man that was suffering. And his, his disciples, isn't it amazing? Don't you love people that are object lessons? His disciples walked by him and they used him as the object lesson and said, hey, Lord, who sinned, this dude or his parents? And the Lord said, no, 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 nothing. Nobody sinned. This is that the, the works of God might be glorified or manifested in him. I'm supposed to do something with this. And he looked at this dude and he spit on the ground. Now, I, you're not going to find this on, on uh, 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 that, what's, what's that crazy religious that TV in? He spit on the ground and put it in the eye. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd be like, Wait for me to say something, but I, I'm, I don't know what to say. I, I might have got offended. He spit, and then he looks at that dude and says, Hey, go wash in the pool of Salome. Four miles from where he was. The dude had to walk blind, in blind obedience. He didn't understand, he just knew. I got, I got to walk with blind obedience. Obedience. Let me, let me tell you what I feel in this church. I feel such a powerful trust, a spirit of trust in this building. I, I'm telling you, I don't feel any divisive division. I don't feel any of that. I feel just some, just, just trust. Just trust. I feel like this, I feel like you folks, you trust what's happening in here. You believe what's happening in here. But I'm going to tell you, we need to take the trust to one more level. We need to go in blind obedience. When God challenges you through the preached word of God, you need, you need to just understand that at the end of the day, there's power. That dude went and he went down 36 steps into that pool. And there was a reason why he had to go to that pool. Because when he went down to wash in that pool, that water supply was from Mount Zion. So really when he was washing his eyes, he was washing his eyes in the name of Jesus. And it, the Bible said when he washed his eyes, he came, he started seeing and he ran back. And the people said, my God, this is that blind dude. It looks like him, but surely this is not him. And it got to be such a debate that they called his parents and his parents said, yeah, that's our son. But we don't know what happened. He can speak for himself. Come on, there's coming a revival to this church that you're not going to be talking about your grandmother or your mother. You're going to be saying something happened to me on a Sunday night right there, on a Sunday morning over here. You're going to be able to speak for yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, you can have a miracle to speak for yourself. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Ten lepers. Ten lepers. You know what, I, what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid. I'm afraid that we've got healing in the church, but we don't have wholeness. Some of you are fractured in your healing. You still have, you still have the residue of a divorce on you. You still have the residue of a broken home, or the residue of a broken home on you. You just, you just, you just, you just, you, 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 you've come here. You're part of. You're in the choir. You can even. Sw I would be nervous to death. We're trying to get our rednecks to do that. They're doing this. You got your sway down, but deep down inside. You got the residue of all this brokenness. And these ten lepers, they cried out, and the Lord said, Hey, go show yourself to the priest. And they joined the religious function, and nine of them took off running to show the priest. But the tenth one, or one of them, looked at him and said, My God, he healed me. I don't have fingers. 
But I can tell the leprosy's been healed. It's a new skin. And the Bible said he went to Jesus. And he got at his feet and he started worshiping. And the Lord looked at him and said, were there not ten? Where are the nine? Come on. And in the man's lingering, in the man's lingering, he got wholeness. See, what you don't know is when you linger around, I know, I know, listen, we're doing, and y'all, y'all got, y'all don't feel any division. I just feel like saying this in the Holy Ghost. Y'all got small groups and, and trendsetters, and I want to be in the trendsetters group. I watched y'all Wednesday night, and Sister Carpenter got up here and talked about all the energy and all the things that y'all did. That's the group I want to be in. Y'all, y'all there? Y'all, y'all got all these different things going on in this church. Listen, it ain't just about lingering around the altar on a Sunday night. It's about lingering around people that have found wholeness. Oh, I'm preaching right now. You can only get that not in a worship service, but in a lifestyle of worship. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? You're at the right place. This place wasn't just for you when you were broken. This is the place that'll make you whole again. This is a place of wholeness. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I've sermonized just a little bit. Now, I got to go where I feel like the Lord wants to move in this place right now. I've been afraid as a pastor. We have far seen the lack of miracles in our church. It's not lack of preaching and sound doctrine. And that produces miracles. It's not the lacking of pure worship that produces miracles. Let me tell you something. I was raised in the fire of this thing. I didn't get in church until I was 16. My parents parents backslid away from God, and I got in church at 16. But my grandparents was in church, and I remember them bringing my second cousin and laying her at the altar. And my grandmother, or laying her in the living room floor, and my grandmother putting that hair that she had been submitted to God about. And she put that hair on that leg that was twice as a baby. It was twice the size as the other one. And she prayed. She said, God, I didn't do this for no standard of the church. I did it because you said I would have power and I was submitted to the authority of your word. And she said, God, she said, you said when I prayed that you would hear me and I'm praying that this leg would be the same she didn't pray for four hours but when she took that hair off of that leg that leg was the same I was born in miracles you've come a, you come a day late and a dollar short to tell me God can't Listen, 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 listen. I think some of the most valuable faith is when people press through their sickness and come to the house of God. I don't have all the answers. I don't know why God doesn't heal everybody. But can I tell you, God still heals. And I feel something supernatural on this building, right? I feel something in the Holy Ghost that is so strong in this church. It was here this morning. It's here tonight. There's a healer in this house. There's a healer. There's a healer. Somebody shout, there's a healer. You can put that first picture up. Just let them pray. This is how we have church. Just a few few years ago, just reach your hands right there. Father, in the name of Jesus, this six-week sickness, however long it's lingered, we take authority right now. This is your lady, the first lady of this church. There's a prophet that speaks through her. God, right now, she's an she's a, she's a instrument, a vessel of God. We come against it right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. I believe God's going to do it. How I many of you know you need a strong first lady? I don't know how they do it. I get tired just watching them. A few years ago, this is Winford. A few years ago, he was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer. On Wednesday night, a man of God came to our church. He grabbed the microphone and he threw me an eraser. He said, whatever you give that to, God will erase and heal. Well, I drove. 
he was having a surgery. And I drove to that surgery. And I put that eraser on his bed and we prayed in the name of Jesus. And he went through and they told him it was stage four. And they started immediately in treatments. And he had went through a couple of treatments and they let him come back home. And he came back home on a, on a, on a Sunday night. He was sick. He was so sick. He said, I'm so sick of these treatments. And, and, and he, 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 he come down to me at the altar. He said, I believe God's going to heal me. And next thing I know, he's out on the floor rolling. Rolling on the floor. That's a big old dude. I mean, that, that's bulldozer. You know what I'm saying? People looking, and I'm, I'm like, sit up there. You're going to kill somebody. And he's rolling. Well, he rolled so much, he come to me. He said, man, God's healed me. He said, God's healed me. And here, 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 here I am. I'm like, oh, man, awesome, dude. Go see the doctor. It's awesome. And be honest with you, I'll probably do that again. A doctor can tell you you've been healed. Okay. So, so he rolled and he said, man, he said, I'm going to that doctor. I ain't doing no more treatments. I, I said, well, you need to go talk to the doctor. You need to do some more tests. And when they got there, they said, we can't, we can't do no tests. Your insurance won't cover it. We're not going to do the tests. We need to just go to treatment. Well, they took him back to do the treatment. And while he was rolling, he didn't realize he had messed that thing up. So they tell him, they said, you know what? They said, you know, we got to fix that now. Good job. Pretty much good job, Bozo. That's a, that's a South word. I know y'all. I told somebody the other day, we got sweet, sweet tea here. And I was like, my God, man, the sweet tea, that was so good. They said, we invented it in Tennessee. I don't even know if that's true, but I'm thinking, y'all y'all take claim for everything. So they took him in to do the test, and here's what come up on the test. That second picture. That was in February of 2015. That was in June, and they told him, they said, we don't know what's happened, but you've been healed. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, you listen to me, God's a healer. He's a healer, 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 he's a healer. Somebody shout, he's gonna heal me of cancer. Come on, somebody shout, he's gonna heal me of sugar diabetes. Somebody shout, he's gonna heal me of heart disease. Come on, somebody shout, I believe God can heal me. I believe he can heal me. When I, get, when I came to live it, when I came now, it's called the ark. When I came to the ark, I started giving a little group of guys Bible studies. Well, immediately, I was called to come do a funeral. And at this funeral service, I went in to do the funeral. And it was the craziest funeral. It, they, they allowed people to get up and testify or say something. And all over the audience, they were getting up and they were saying things that weren't even connected to the church. And, and I'm sitting there. Well, how I got involved in that was a backslider from our church called me because she was dating this guy whose young brother had drowned. And I'm sitting there listening to all these stories that are so disconnected from the church. And all this, and I'm thinking, God, why am I there? And I looked, and there was a young man there, and the Lord spoke to me. It was the girl, it was the guy she was dating. He said, you're here for her. Well, I... I went and talked to him and got him to come to church on Sunday morning. He was so scared, he sat by the door. He was scared, man. You know, we can scare folks every once in a while. He, he, he was scared. He was sitting by the door. We got side doors like these. He was sitting on this side by the door. And, and uh, he was trying to get out. Man, I ran, by the pla ran off the platform, went and grabbed him and said, Eric, said, man, let me give you a Bible study. Y'all come to our house. And we, they came to our house and we started doing exploring God's word. And the backslider, she just wanted to talk about dinosaurs. They're probably going to watch this tonight. <laughs> Look, if, 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 you, if you're taking somebody to, Bible, to, to a Bible study and you've been in church, don't, don't, don't ask these guys about dinosaurs. Let us get through the Bible. We don't know. We're making it up. <laughs> I started pulling out Morel Cornwell. That was during the gap period. Yeah, that's right. Okay, y'all get that someday. But I, I, 
I, I, I start, and man, so, so we scheduled it for the next Friday night, and I went and prayed like I custom do when prayed before we gave the Bible study. And the Lord said, look, I want you to do it different. I want you to come to my, I think it was the Lord. It might have just been common sense, but I, I think it was the Lord. And I left my Bible at the church, and they come in. I looked at Eric and said, man, I left my Bible at the church. Let's go. And I got him in that office. I started talking to him. Tears started coming down his face. He said, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. I baptized him on Friday night. He went to youth service just a couple of weeks later on a Wednesday night youth service and got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But here's what you didn't know about Eric. Eric, I believe he was 16, 14, 15, 16 years old. He, 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 he was charged as an adult for, for a second degree attempted murder. He served eight years in an adult penit or four years out of eight in an adult penitentiary. He come out of that, his home, it was messed up. His life was messed up. Everything about him was messed up. We baptized him. He got the Holy Ghost. He's been a drug addict. He's been in prison. He's been messed up. He does not have anybody in his family that is even connected to the church. And I'm going to tell you, we prayed him through. God did a work in him. He married Danielle. He's got a master's or, or a, a master's degree in counseling now. And and he's the biggest soul winner and he's a staff member at our church. That's Eric right there. He's got a baby girl right now. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God can do anything. Come on, is there anybody in this building that believes God can do anything? Man, I feel it. I promise you, I'm hurrying. Just give me a few more minutes. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. We run buses. We run buses. We're in a real poverty area. And I know when you're in different areas, different kind of ministries work. Well, one of ours is bus ministry. And we were picking up Chris. We were picking up Chris for seven years. We were picking up this young boy. I remember taking Christmas presents. We bless all of our bus kids with Christmas gifts. And we took Christmas presents to his house. I did not have a clue. His mother was a backslider. I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue. We were picking her boy up for seven years. And in 2012, this lady walked in. She was frail. She looked like death. And she walked in and she scooted in a pew. And I looked at her and I was like, I know I recognize her, but I couldn't place her. So I walked back there after church and I'm telling you, she, she looked like death. And I shook her hand and, and I said, how are you? And, and uh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't really... I couldn't really figure out who it was, so I was playing like I, you know how we do. It's so good to see you. How is, is, is David, yeah, David, how's David? She's looking, and, and then I realized, that's Vivian, that's Vivian, that's Vivian. And she, tears was running down her eyes, and I knew something was wrong. She walked out of the church. I grabbed somebody. I said, what's going on with Vivian? They said, well, she was just diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver. She was an alcoholic. Picked her boy up for seven years. She was an alcoholic. And she had been given a death sentence. Well, I looked up Sunday morning. The next Sunday morning, here she come. Looked up Sunday night. Here she come. Looked up Wednesday night. Here she come. I looked. I just kept watching. And every time she would come, I'd look at somebody on, on the platform. I said, man, her color looks really good. Here's Vivian. Put that picture up. This is Vivian. We picked her kid up for seven years. Seven years. That's Vivian. She was dying of cirrhosis of the liver. And man, and I know this isn't good, and, and my God, Brother Hammond, y'all edit this. But I, I looked at her finally, and I was like, my God, she's gaining weight. I know that ain't good. That would have fit, but not in her case. We were like, she, she, she was our color. Her, she was gaining. So what she was, she looked like death. And can I tell you? Can I tell you? She came in probably the worst year I ever had in our church in 2012. That was part of the harvest of 2012. But here's the good story. Put that next picture. The bus that picked up her boy, she drives it now. Shh. <laughs> 
she don't only drive the bus on Sunday that picked up her boy, but she drives the bus and keeps the kid at our catalyst program, our addiction program. She goes, picks up people that were bound by alcohol and drugs and bring them to an environment. I didn't say this when I was talking about Eric. Last year, we baptized 40 people at least. I was trying to think of them in the name, the names of them today. Over 40 people was baptized because Eric drives a bus, teaches Bible studies, and he's going after those that nobody thinks has any, any good in them. But can I tell you what's on this church? This church is a house of trap. You walk in the right place. This is where the act it turns into a worshiper. This is a place of miracles and signs and wonders. You walked into the right church. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, this is the right place. This is the right time. Stand with me tonight. I feel it. I felt him at I felt him at, at 9, 9 42, I think it was, when we walked through the entrance of this of these entrances of these doors. There's something special about this place. It ain't because this building's beautiful. And it is. But it's the anointing that's in this place. This is a place where the name lives. Some of you, do you hear that sound? That's the sound of deliverance right there. Don't let that scare you. That's the sound of deliverance right there. Oh. When I got in church, when I got in church, I was so depressed, thoughts of, thoughts of suicide, messed up life. You come in this, you hear this music, you walk in your prayer room and you feel the wind of prayer before you walk through the doors. When you come in here, you want to know why your bishop get up here and cry? Because there's something unique about this place. I don't know who you are tonight. I got a feeling you ain't been here that much, but you feel something different. You ain't ever felt what you feel right now. And let me just tell you, what you feel right now is, is real. And if you were to take the mask off these beautiful people tonight, you would find out there's ex-drug addicts and ex-alcoholics. People that went through divorce, marriages that God put back together. We're not perfect people. We just found wholeness in his presence. Here's what I want to do tonight. If you need God to deliver you of anything, if you need him to deliver you from alcohol, drugs, depression, fear, insecurity, complacency, whatever it is, if you need God to deliver you, I want you to come. These altars are alive tonight. Why don't you give God a chance tonight? If you need a miracle in your body, why don't you come? You don't need a preacher to lay hands on you. There's power all over this place tonight. I come against cancer. Come on, there's miracles in this house today.
Come on, why don't you come? Why don't you lift your hands high, lift your voice, lift your head up to the heavens. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, God can fill you with it right now. <laughs>